allied Fifth Army rolls on in the face of incessant rain. Scenes such as these depicting something of the terrific obstacles barring the road to Rome. Rivers are roaring torrents. Pontoon bridges thrown up by engineers are pounded by the flood. Mud, knee deep, gives way only to modern road building equipment. A Red Cross worker braves the quagmire to carry freshly baked American donuts to troops bogged down along the roadways. General Clark, 5th Army Commander, enjoys lunch along with his men. Religious services for American troops in the shadow of the Apennine Mountains. An army chaplain conducting mass within sound of the guns. One fifty fives score a direct hit atop Mount Camino, one of the Nazi strong points. Allied firepower is terrific. Bazookas, the infantry's new rocket gun, are devastating. Field hospitals, plainly marked with the Red Cross emblem, operate within a few miles of the fighting front. Here, blood plasma sent by civilians in America is saving lives that might otherwise be lost. The Allies continue the advance. Through the ruined streets of an Italian town, Americans move in cautiously. Booby traps and landmines are favorite souvenirs left by the enemy. The road back. Nazi prisoners on their way to the rear. Following closely in the wake of the fighting, ambulance units are tireless in caring for the wounded. civilians looking to the United Nations for peace and relief from war. Streaking 90 miles across the South Pacific from bases in New Guinea, American Liberator bombers bound for the Japanese-held island of New Britain. New Britain, between New Guinea and the Solomon Islands, was once a German colony then an Australian mandate until captured and fortified by the Japs. The Americans' objective, the Arawi Peninsula, 356 tons of high explosive softening up enemy positions in the jungle below. Naval guns coordinate their attack with the pounding from the sky. An invasion fleet moves in. The beachhead is won. northernmost of the Gilbert Islands is another point of attack. Though small, Makin is of great strategic value to the United Nations. Navy cameras, synchronized with blazing guns, record the story as American planes blast and riddle Japanese shipping trying to bring reinforcements to the island bases.
dive bombing the enemy airstrip, Yankee planes brave a hail of anti-aircraft fire. Again, they roar in. Jap bombers are destroyed on the ground. Steaming from the north, General MacArthur's 6th United States Army moves in. Lieutenant Colonel James Roosevelt, at right, son of the president, serving as an observer. A Japanese bomber is driven off. Another receives a direct hit. Amphibious forces storm the beach. Three days of jungle war against treetop snipers and hidden machine guns, and the island base is won. The entire garrison is wiped out. Those who would surrender are taken as prisoners. Bougainville, 200 miles across water from Rabaul, main Jap base on New Britain, is the last of the Solomon Islands in enemy hands. Now, in Bougainville's Empress Augusta Bay, heavy reinforcements pour in to strengthen the American position. The Marshall Islands, a United States Carrier Task Force, writes a thrilling epic in this new phase of war in the mid-Pacific. 72 Jap planes shot down in this one engagement. Their torpedo planes desperately attack. Superior marksmanship sends them flaming into the sea. American sea and air power taking the offensive in the Pacific. 